It's Madden NFL 24, and it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Baltimore Ravens. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL on this fine afternoon brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and m and Bank Stadium. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, this Ravens team has been so successful in recent years, 10 or more wins in four of the last five seasons. What do they need to do to take that next step? Well, the way the Ravens have played for a lot of their franchise history, we know the defense is going to take care of business. They're going to keep you in every ball game. I think on offense, can they throw the ball more proficiently, especially out wide to the receivers, and make plays that way to continue to open up running lanes for a team that we know loves to move the ball along the ground. And meanwhile, the Titans last year, they were one of those strange statistical anomalies, CD. When you look at their defense, they were the best in football, number one overall against the run, but worst in the league, number 32 against the pass. And part of the reason they were number one against the run, the struggles they had slowing people down through the air so people threw it and threw it and threw it and had great success. And a team that should have been in the playoffs last year somehow managed to miss it. Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. The Ravens offense going to work, and as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Here's the fourth-year man, J.K. Dobbins. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Jackson to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, that's absolutely going to fire this defense up. They made it their mission to deny that completion, and they came through with a nice hit and knocked it incomplete. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Jackson now. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And he will have a Ravens first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially as pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mike Andrews, the tight end. He'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. I have to imagine many a defensive coordinators had a sleepless night trying to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? But you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and help you on the corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against a speed guy on the perimeter. Taking matters into his own hands, and he picks up four yards and a first down. To throw is Jackson. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Haven't met a corner that's worth this salt yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? 
So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Christian Fulton. And the Titans will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. Not something you see very often from a quarterback of his caliber, an opening drive interception. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that even he's surprised at how that one played out. But we know this guy is not going to stop him from continuing to fire as this game goes along. Probably give a little nod of respect across the field for that one and let him know he'll be back the very next series. Well, the Titans ready to take over on offense for the first time. And it is the now 35-year-old Ryan Tannehill who leads him out in his 12th NFL campaign. Those who expected Ryan Tannehill to go quietly into the night after the Titans drafted Will Levis, well, they clearly don't know this man well at all. He's a fighter and former comeback player of the year and expects to have his best season yet as a pro in this campaign. The NFL's leading rusher in 2019 and 2020, Derrick Henry. He'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. On second down, here's Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. I like his awareness in the pocket there. Nowhere to go with the football. So instead of forcing it to the sideline, he's just going to put this one into the harbor and live to fight another down without getting wet. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. He gets this one to Burks. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring up fourth down. But we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. Remember last time out, they threw the interception on their first drive. Good news, their defense backed him up, so it's still 0-0 here as they begin their second possession. Yeah, and one great way to judge a defense, how do they handle what we call sudden change when all of a sudden, you know, it goes against their offense and have to run out in the field and try and put out the fire? Give this one great kudos for getting out there and not letting that interception lead to points. Excellent job by them defensively. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Jackson. He'll swing this out to Dobbins. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. And he'll get up near the 45 or spot it at the 44. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. He was certainly quick to atone for his early game interception. Instead of making another mistake forcing something, he reset himself and found a lane to pick up the first down. They go play action now. Jackson, he'll let it go deep for Beckham. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Offenses all over continue to be aggressive, and most people never turn down a shot at a deep ball. But oftentimes, it attracts a little bit of extra attention, and it did on that play, and that one got knocked away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now it's Jackson. That's 
complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 43. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. And that's how you shake off the interception you threw on the opening drive. Come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one. The man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. Well. It's another first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people were worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had it to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield. But he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down and eight. From the gun, Jackson. And that is incomplete. Fourth down now as the Titans defense holds up in coverage. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Tucker's kick is good. And the Ravens strike first at 3 in. So after drive number three here, we have a score, and it's three points after the field goal. I would say the feeling out process for both these teams, I'd say it's over, partner. Everyone understands what's going on now. You've kind of probed a little bit. Now you want to start throwing the big shots. First three points up on the board could be significant. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. Julius Chestnut now on the return. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good, three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> They'll start out here with a jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Draw play. This is Henry. Oh, he pulls over it. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Tannehill now to throw. Open man is Burks, and he's got him. Now he's loose down the left sideline. Touchdown, Titans! Traylon Burks, 75 yards. And the Titans have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. 
And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. Jackson from the shotgun. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? Still second down. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. They'll go again with Dobbins. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center of gravity and turn his legs for a really nice pickup. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. And they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's a second down and nine. And now Jackson will look to throw it. That's into the hands of Prochet. Only able to gain a couple there. And now third down and six to go. Throwing is Jackson. And that'll be complete to Dobbins. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 32-yard line. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. 
but how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Play action. It's Jackson. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Well, that one's all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. Gave a glimpse of his quick feet, but not a whole lot of space down at the 30. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Jackson. Shot in there. It's out of bounds. Incomplete. Had the right idea there. Trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground. Incomplete. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. He made his first. This from 47 yards out. Tucker's kick is good, and they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. So the margin shrinks there as they get the field goal to draw them a bit closer here in the second quarter. Yeah, nice snap, nice hole. They just want to keep this game close, so give them credit for finishing that one off with three. Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25 yard line. Tennessee's offense back to work again. We'll see Traylon Burks. He's the star wide receiver and he's doing his thing so far here into the second quarter. And how you get distinguished as a star is each and every week performing to a high level no matter what they throw at you because you're always wanting to take him out of the game if you're a defensive team. How do you press him, double him, triple him, all those things, but the best players show up each and every week, solid games and some spectacular ones. And he has showed up time and time again. On first and 10, Tannehill. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. On second down, here's Henry. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Here's Tannehill. down Ryan Stonehouse on the punt. Pulled in at the 24. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. 
wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe somebody to press it a little bit. This might be the case. The drive will commence with a run by J.K. Dobbins. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Now Dobbins again on second down. And a 42-yard line here and brought down there. That one a first down pickup of eight. Dobbins with a typical strong run. And three years in, you still feel like you haven't seen all he can be as a pro. Injuries wiped out 2021 and part of 2022. But when he's out there and healthy, he can be electric. And they run the option here on first and ten. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. Pretty nice play here. They go read option, read the defensive end, and when he collapsed down inside, how about the quarterback pulling it, keeping it, and not only getting to the second level, but picking up some really nice yardage. Very, very well read. Now Jackson on first down. His throw incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A give up the middle to Dobbins. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Now it's Jackson. Open man is Bateman. It's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 27-yard line. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. On first and 10, it's Dobbins. He's able to get six, a nice pickup down to the 21. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 21, here's the second down and four. On oh, the option right is Jackson. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Dobbins. Trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Good work there, holding him out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Second and goal from the one. One more time with Dobbins. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. This defense is holding strong, but they're going to need one more stop, maybe two more stops. And where the ball is on the field, the Thank offensive you. playbook remains wide open. They've got to be alert for anything. They'll try to run with Dobbins. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. Here we go. Here we go. Showtime, baby. 
Interesting, a chip shot field goal here would give them the lead, but instead, they're going on fourth down. Now Jackson. Got a man, it's caught for the Ravens' touchdown. Odell Beckham, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that'll make this a six-point game. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Chestnut now to return it, taking it about the one. And able to get this out to the 25. The Titans going to go back on offense here late in this first half. With this slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half, we'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. Me and you, baby. Me and you. On first down, Tannehill. And a little floater there, but it'll wind up incomplete, falling to the ground. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw is Tannehill. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Well, they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're just going to pick up a holding call. To throw on second down is Tannehill. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, Maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. This time they stay on the ground, and they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, standing just outside his own goal line. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Oh, nice move. 51 yards on the punt there. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. J.K. Dobbins leading the way as the offense returns to the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Here's Jackson to throw. Pass on the crossing route is complete. This is Andrews. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So they move from 136 over to the other as they come up on first down. Jackson now. 
find Dobbins out of the backfield. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This is a 49-yard attempt, right hash. Tucker's kick is good. And now it's a two-score game at nine, 16 to seven. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Brandon, but with six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we come upon halftime with nine points separating these two teams. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Titans going to get the ball to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back to it on EA Sports. And from the end zone, here's Julius Chestnut. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Out come the Titans now. They'll have it first on offense to start the third. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. In motion right is Hopkins. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Tannehill's throw pulled in by Hopkins. 
And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. On second down, here's Tannehill. This will go to Henry out wide. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. So the completion good for just three. And that will bring up third and one. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Now Tannehill. And he wisely will throw that one away. See the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Tannehill. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. He dumps it off for Henry. Well, almost, but not quite. Needed 10. He got nine. Fourth down. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. So the kick from here on a field goal would have been right at 53 yards, but instead, offense out there. They're going for it. On the ground with a tight end. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. So this drive going to continue following the conversion on fourth. Here's first and ten. Back to throw, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Tannehill. That'll be complete to Okonkwo. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 14. A gain there of 21 yards. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the red zone now, Tannehill. On the out route, he's got Burks. And the Titans are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Henry is not going to get a whole lot. Maybe a yard down to the three. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. You get down in this area of the field, you know you're going to get a heavy dose of number 22. They stopped him for a short game there, but can they do it a couple of more times? So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Henry again. And he will 
take this one in for a Titans touchdown. Derrick Henry, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Titans are back within a score. You think back to some of the great goal line bruisers of the past, the Earl Campbells, the John Riggins, the Marshawn Lynches. I think you can put Derrick Henry right in that group as he scores there with another patented Derrick Henry run. Here's Badgley now to try to add the PAT. And it's good. It cuts it to two. 16-14 our score. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise, that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. And the slot man goes in motion left. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Now they did get a little gain on this play, but all in all, a nice job defensively against the touch pass. They were able to string it out towards the sideline and never let him get the corner and turn it upfield for a bigger chunk of yardage. From the 22 now, here's second and nine. Here's a give to Dobbins running right, and he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. A dime look defensively here for the Titans on third. Now it's Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down. And they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Titan football. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. At this point in the second half, one mistake on a forced throw could doom your chances of a comeback. So that's the right call there to just throw that one away. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Here's Tannehill. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't come in. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into 
to an incompletion, and that should get him off the field with a three and out. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Play action, it's Jackson. That's complete to the fullback, Ricard. Short completion, just four yards, and that will bring up second down. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. From the 31, here's the second down and six. Slot man moves right. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and five. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. The ball was tipped and fell incomplete, but it was tipped up in the air, so the guys on defense, they had to feel like that was a big opportunity, and it was missed. They needed a play to help turn things around a little bit. Ball's in the air. Can they rally to it and get it? On that play, they weren't able to. They'll take the ball batted away, but boy, they missed a big chance there. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and out will come the offense as they take over. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He'll complete this one to Okonkwo. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. Tannehill now to throw. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Now Tannehill. job of absorbing the hit just couldn't secure the football through the catch and he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion that's something defenders work on all the time if you're there make the contact but continue to work your way through the receiver so that you can't possess the football and turn it into a catch open man is Burks and he's got him yeah, he is out of bounds inside the 35 he has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep with the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. 
on first and 10, Tannehill. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Similar to a shooter in basketball, just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now, we have a guy who made the catch. They try to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw is Tannehill. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Well, it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. So third down, and a field goal from here would be right about 50 yards as they try to get closer. Here's Tannehill. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. So here comes a very important kick now for Michael Badgley. This for a fourth quarter lead. Badgley able to punch this one through. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now here come the Ravens. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And yeah, not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. They'll give him credit for trying, but there's no fooling the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stump the run and then executed. From the 24 now, here's the second and nine. Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Off the play fake to Dobbins. Here's Jackson. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. He already did his primary job with an interception earlier, but here he gets a chance to be a pass rusher and takes on the challenge of blitzing and makes another big play. That's something to file away and maybe break out later in this one or in a future game. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Jackson, option right. Jackson hit and he lost the football. It's picked up by the Titans. And so we're into it over. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. He had the option there, decided to keep it, exposed himself and fumbled it. Yeah, and you worry about the hits he's going to take in that situation. In this case, not only does he take the hit, he coughs the ball up, as you noted. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. 
They'll be hoping to work a little clock and try to add on to this slim fourth quarter lead. But whatever happens on this drive, certainly a huge fumble recovery by their defense at this juncture. Tenth carry now for Derek Henry. He'll take it inside the 25. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. In motion, left goes Burks. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And it's a Titans touchdown. 24-yard touchdown. And the Titans get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. So the quarterback drops to throw, looks over, and boom, a guy that wide open, he has to be thinking, wait a minute, this is some kind of a dream. This is too easy. Yeah, a great dream. One you don't want to wake up from. But for the defense, almost feels like there was a bust in coverage. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And that will ensure that it will take a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And the offense for the Ravens returns to the field. There's still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. In just a one-possession game, down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two-point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm is confused. just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's going to have to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. This offense so far on third down, they've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and seven. He completes it to Beckham. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's a much-needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. That is caught with Sean Bateman. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 36. To throw is Jackson. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. 
Jackson. Throw right side is complete to Andrews. His tight end. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Well behind the sticks here with a second and 18. And Jackson throwing once more. That one complete to Crochet. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Here's Jackson to throw. Open man is Bateman, it's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 13-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw complete there to Beckham. Sometimes it's hard to figure, but you can live with incompletions in this situation. You can't live with these short gains that take time off the clock. You know who loves it, this defense. Here's a second and seven. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Here now, third down. Now Jackson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Here we go, it's Jackson on fourth down. And it's incomplete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. We gotta have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now the Ravens gonna use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Now they'll fake the jet sweep and run up the middle with Henry. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. down and that should just about do it.
The Titans go victory formation down to a knee. Tannehill to a knee, and that ought to be the final act of this ball game. Well, that second half, Charles, a little bit different from the first. Not only did we have the lead change after intermission, but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory. And what's the old expression? That's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head. You know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half of the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter, at EA Madden NFL. From Baltimore, so long, everybody.